I have tried all kinds of meditation, fasting and a voluntary isolation, solitary life, but it has come to nothing. Is there one thing or one quality that will end my seeking and my confusion? And if there is, what am I to do? May I read the question again? I have tried all kinds of meditation, fasting and a voluntary, solitary life, but it has come to nothing. Is there one thing or one quality that will end my seeking and my confusion? Is there? If there is, what am I to do? You understand this question? Are you in that position? You understand the question? That is, one goes to Japan, Zen Buddhism, Zen meditation, the various forms of Tibetan, Hindu, the Christian, and all the innumerable meditations man has invented. And this big questioner says, I've been through all that. I have done yoga of various kinds, fasted, led a solitary life, trying to find out what is truth. And at the end of it all, I have found nothing. You understand this? You people don't understand. It isn't a tragedy to you, is it? Is there one thing, one quality, that will end my seeking and my confusion? Is, if there is, tell me what to do. You understand the full meaning of this question? I met a man once, he was a very old man, I was quite young, grey hair, almost dying. And he heard one of the talks and came to see me afterwards. And he, spent, he said, I have spent 25 years of my life in solitude, in meditation, I've been married and so on, but I left all that. And for 25 years I've meditated. And I see, now that I have heard you, that I have lived in an illusion. You understand? 25 years, you people don't know a thing. And to say to oneself, I have lived an illusion, I have deceived myself. You understand? At the end of twenty-five years to say that. Which means a wasted life, which you are doing anyhow, without being meditating for twenty-five years. And he asks, what is the one thing, one action, one step that will resolve my confusion, the end to my search? You understand the question? Are you in that position, any of you? 
except the questioner. You understand, you have come to the end of your tether. You have read, you have walked, you have heard, you have cried, you have meditated, you have longed, you have sacrificed. You understand? Probably you haven't done any of those things. And if you have, then what is the one thing that will resolve all this? First of all, don't seek. Do you understand what it means? Because if you seek, you will find. But you find what you have already sought. I wonder if you see all this. What you will find in your search is what you have projected. You being your priest, your gods, your uh, professor, your guru, your philosophy, your experience, that projected in the future you will find. Therefore a wise man doesn't seek. And the questioner says, what is the one thing For that one thing, there must be total freedom from all attachment. To your body, to your exercises, to your yoga, to your own opinions, judgments, and persons and beliefs. Complete. Freedom from all attachment. Right? Don't make it so a sorrowful thing, it isn't. There must be no fear. But this is not one thing. Absolutely no psychological fear. And therefore, when there is physical fear, you deal with it. You understand what I am saying? When, when somebody is attacking you, you deal with it. But psychologically, there is no fear. That means no time is tomorrow. No, you don't get all this. And the mind, having understood the nature of sorrow, therefore f freedom from sorrow, which doesn't mean that you, you are indifferent and all the rest of freedom from sorrow. Right? These are only indications, not the final thing. If these don't exist, the other final thing cannot be. You understand the point? I don't think you do. Look, sir, a man or a woman, a man has spent years and years searching, seeking, asking, demanding. So called sacrificing, taking vows of celibacy, poverty, you follow? And at the end of it all, he says, My God, I have nothing. I have ashes in my head. 
even though they think they have in their hands Christ or Jesus or the Buddha, it is still ashes. I wonder if you see all this. And such a man asks, what is the right action in my life? Right action which will be right under all circumstances. It doesn't vary from time to time according to culture, according to nation, according to education. Right, precise, actual. When all this is clear, that your mind is totally unattached to itself, you understand? To its own body. And no fear. And the ending of sorrow. Then if that is clear, the one thing is compassion. Understand? <laughs> Out of all this comes compassion. Then compassion is not ashes in your hand. It isn't the compassion that does social reform, social work. The saints, it's in the compassion of the saints. Compassion of the uh, people who go out in the war and heal pe- doctors and so on, so on. It's not that at all. It's the one answer that is true under all circumstances, and therefore, out of that, right action. Because compassion goes with intelligence. If there is no intelligence which is born out of compassion, instead, then you get lost in some trivialities. And the world then accepts those trivialities as being the extraordinary acts of compassion. They become saints and they become heroes, they become all kinds of idiotic recognitions of silly people. So there is only there is one act, one quality that is supreme and that is compassion with its intelligence. And out of that intelligence there is a right action under all circumstances. 